So Google just released something that's really interesting. I'm a little bit torn, to be honest. I don't know exactly how I feel about this. It's part of their existing Notebook LM, a really good AI tool where you can upload any sort of PDFs or Google Drive documents or website links, and then you're able to chat with it to ask it questions, and the AI will answer any questions you have about the contents of those documents. You can do a summary, create kind of an outline, do a quick presentation on it, etc. Up until just a few days ago, it was just text. It was a chat back and forth. You know, you type in your question, it gives you an answer. But just recently, they added this feature where you can where you can ask it to create a podcast for you. The podcast has two hosts. Currently, it's English only. It's got a male and a female voice, and and those two voices with very high audio quality very pleasing speaking voices and perfect diction do a little six to seven to eight minute podcast about whatever the documents that you have uploaded yeah some of this stuff is seriously making us think it's wild so for today's video i want to try something different i want to show you what ai can do so i took that audio podcast and i've created video for it with avatars from hey gen so what you're about to see is written by AI. It's summarized by AI based on real research papers, based on real news. It's voiced by AI completely, and the video avatars are generated by AI. All I had to do was find the links or the PDFs, the documents, upload it to a project, and click one button. Here's the first one. It's about a project out of Tencent that can create video game worlds, open worlds, on the fly using AI. So this is two AIs reading a script generated by AI about AI video games. Take a listen. Ever dream of open world games that go beyond anything we've seen before. Games that are truly like limitless. That's what this deep dive is all about. We're looking at game geno and how AI might actually be able to craft those experiences. Not just, you know, making prettier graphics, but actually designing the game itself. That's what's really got me excited. This potential to go beyond just designing like textures or landscapes. We're talking about AI creating characters, stories, entire worlds that react to your every move. It's a whole other ballgame. It's a tall order, to say the least. But before we get ahead of ourselves, let's break down some of the technical stuff. We're talking Game Geno and this massive data set of existing games called O-Game Data. What exactly are we dealing with here? So imagine you want to teach an AI about, say, painting. You probably wouldn't just show it stick figures, right? You'd want to give it the masterpieces, the classics the entire history of art. Well, that's kind of what O-Game Data is. It's like the AI's art school. Exactly. A massive collection of something like 150 games across genres and styles, all feeding into this AI, helping it understand what makes a game world actually work. So this AI is basically mainlining the entire history of video games. Yeah. Wild. But what happens next? How do we go from this mountain of data to, you know, actually playing something? Right, so the AI goes through a two-stage training process. First, it focuses on building a foundation, you know, like learning the essential rules and patterns of game design, things like level design, how characters move, all that good stuff. So like learning the grammar of game design before it tries to write a novel. Perfect analogy. And once it's got those fundamentals down, then it moves on to what they call the instruction phase. That's where things get really interesting. Because that's where the creativity kicks in. Exactly. This is where the researchers were able to start giving the AI instructions and seeing what it could do. Like, for example, they told it to generate different characters and were able to get versions of Geralt from The Witcher. Oh, wow. A spacefaring astroneer. Okay, that's cool. Even get this RoboCop. RoboCop battling zombies in a fantasy forest. Sign me up for that game. <laughs> but it sounds like it's mostly pulling from these existing characters and worlds. Can it truly invent something new? That's the million dollar question right there. It can remix and combine existing elements in these honestly really impressive ways, but I think we're still in the very early stages of understanding if it can be truly original. If it can come up with something you know, completely from scratch. Okay, I mean, that sounds that sounds incredible. Yeah. But would the AI just like paste a moon and some stars onto the existing scene? Would it actually understand like... No, no, you're getting it. This is the cool part. The AI actually understands how those elements should interact. So the changing light affects the environment, you know? Shadows lengthen. The horse's animations change as it moves from a forest path into an open clearing. It's not just slapping stuff on top. So it's not just about placing objects. It's about understanding how those objects exist within a dynamic world, how they're all connected. Mm. Did they? Did the researchers actually create this horse riding scene? So that looks pretty good. And I am a whole lot more interested in the whole UBI thing now. 
So if you want to try it yourself, here's how you do that. First of all, it's a Google product. It's free. It's called Notebook LM, LM as in language model. Once you open up, it kind of looks like this. Click new notebook. And each project, you can think of it as its own sort of topic or interest. And you can upload whatever resources you want. You can upload from Google Drive. You can use PDFs, links to websites. You can even paste whatever text you want in here. Upload files, PDFs. .txt, markdown, etc. For example, here's Arc Invest. They have their little report about how they think about humanoid robots. So if I take that URL, just go to the website here, paste it in there, and there it is. Insert, and you can add a lot of different sources, a variety of sources, and ask questions about it. For example, you can say here, how big is this opportunity? The AI will or read through the documents, whatever sources you've uploaded, think about it and, and then answer. We've covered this in the previous video. It works incredibly well, surprisingly well. Really enjoyed using this. As you can see here, it will, will have little annotations for where it's pulling the data from. So you can double check that it's correct, that it's not hallucinating. But the new feature is here, Notebook Guide. It has this audio overview where you can have a deep dive conversation with two hosts, English only, click generate. And this will take a few minutes. You don't have to stay in this window. You can go about your business. And then when it's ready, it'll look like this. You just hit play and it will play that podcast for you, that audio overview. All right, ready to dive in. You guys asked for it, humanoid robots. I guess I did ask for it. It's surprisingly good at making engaging and interesting content. You can change the playback speed, download, or delete. If you have a Hey Gen account, I'll link it down below, you can actually just upload that audio and use any of their video avatars or even create your own with your own footage to animate that audio. You can even write a script and it'll provide a voice for you. It'll look something like this. Ever dream of open world games that go beyond anything we've seen before? Games that are truly like AI creating characters, stories, entire worlds that react to So here's this uh, research paper by Arc Invest about humanoid robots. And I threw in the charts from the article in there. As I was listening to it, I couldn't help but think that it's really not bad. In fact, I've probably listened to a podcast or two that were a lot worse than this. Now, they don't reveal the prompt that they're using here to generate this, but over time, I'm sure it's going to get better. You're probably going to have some customization abilities. And I can really see myself using this to get caught up on stuff. You need to comb through a few research papers, throw it in there, get a little six minute summary presented in a funny and entertaining way, and just listen to it in your car or while you're working out. This could be huge. Now, of course, hallucinations can be a problem. I've been working with this Notebook LM and I found it surprisingly good. I have not found any glaring, obvious issues or errors. It's fairly reliable. Now, you never, now, of course, don't think it's ever 100% reliable. It, I'm sure it's not 100% correct all the time. I'm sure it makes mistakes. But out of the chat with your documents kind of things that I've tried, this product by Google, Notebook LM, I got to say is very, very good. Anyways, take a listen to this ARC Invest report presented to you by two AIs and ask yourself this. Are you not entertained? Could you see yourself listening to something like this to catch up on whatever news you want? Because again, you can throw anything in here. Do they inform you about this stuff in a pleasing manner? If you enjoyed this, hit thumbs up, subscribe. My name is Wes Roth, and, uh, and let's have our two AIs take it from here. All right, ready to dive in? You guys asked for it, humanoid robots. Are they just hype or are they really coming for our jobs? Well, we dug into this new report from ARK Invest, and let me tell you. Yeah, some of this stuff is seriously making us think. It's wild. Okay, so imagine this, right? Mm -hmm. A robot that costs less than a Tesla could do your job. Uh, hold on, hold on. Less than a Tesla. Come on. That's... I know, right? But here's the kicker. It only has to be 5% better than you. Just 5%. Okay, now that's interesting. 5% doesn't seem like much. Exactly. And ARK says that little difference, that's all it takes to completely change the game for U.S. manufacturing. Wow. So we're talking about, like, robots on the factory floor, building stuff. Building cars, packing boxes, you name it. See, this is what gets me right. You've got Elon Musk saying humanoid robots are the key to unlimited economic growth. And then ARK comes out with this report saying, hold my beer. This thing could be worth 24 trillion dollars trillion with a t insane right but they were focused specifically on u.s factories okay so let's narrow it down then get into the nitty-gritty so get this air case is that if you could swap out half just h-a-l-f of all factory workers in the u.s with robots half half uh. 
we could keep making the same amount of stuff. Wow. That's that's a lot of robots. It is. And it really makes you think. About the future of work. Right? Exactly. Yeah. So we're picturing robots putting cars together, robots packing up all our online orders. Yeah. But what's the tipping point where companies actually decide, let's go in the bots? You're right. It's not just about replacing humans. Like everything else, it comes down to dollars and cents. And that's where this whole tipping point idea comes in, right? ARK spent a lot of time on that in their report. Yeah, they actually have this graph that shows exactly when a robot becomes cheaper than paying a human. Okay, so walk us through this graph. What am I seeing here? Well, it's comparing how much a humanoid robot costs to how much more productive that robot has to be compared to, you know, a regular employee mm -hmm. to make it worth the investment. Gotcha. So more productive meaning like gets more work done in the same amount of time. Exactly. So let's say a factory worker makes $40,000 a year. A company can buy a robot for, say, $16,000. Wait, $16,000? That's a steal. Right. And if that robot can produce even just 5% more than a human worker, boom, the company comes out ahead in a few years easy. Okay, now Elon Musk's whole cheaper than a Tesla comment is starting to make a lot more sense. Right. It's not just a catchy line. So does that mean every factory worker needs to be worried, like, hit that 5% extra, your robot chow? Well, hold on. The real world is never that simple. ARK found that this isn't a one-size-fits-all situation. You have to factor in things like how big the company is, what they make, all that. And then there's that labor share thing you mentioned earlier. What was that again? Right. So labor share is basically how much of a company's money goes towards paying their employees. Like, Big companies, they're already using a lot of automation, but it's mostly for really specific jobs. Yeah, like those huge car factories with robots welding things, putting parts together. Exactly. Those companies can afford that kind of technology, no problem. But what about the smaller businesses? Right. What about them? They can't all afford a fleet of robots. So smaller businesses, they can't all shell out for robots, right? But their work seems like it'd be easier for a robot to do anyway, right? And that's the thing, right? It almost seems obvious, like you'd think smaller companies would be first in line for the robot takeover. Right, exactly. But the robots we have now, they're really good at those really specific tasks. The things you see in big factories, the kind of work you find in smaller businesses. It's more adaptable. You need a jack-of-all-trades kind of worker. And that's where these humanoid robots, that's what makes them different. Okay, so more general purpose. Got it. Yeah. But even if it's cheaper in the long run, some industries, they're barely paying minimum wage as it is. Why wouldn't they just jump at the chance to get robots instead? I know, right? Mm. Seems like a no-brainer. But remember that labor share thing we were talking about before? Yeah, how much of a company's costs go to paying people. Exactly. Well, it turns out there's a huge difference in labor costs between industries. Like, even more than the differences we see between big and small companies. Oh, interesting. So it's not just can they afford a robot. It's how much are they already spending on people? Mm -hmm. What kind of industries are we talking about here? Give us some examples. Sure. So think about like tobacco manufacturing. Their labor costs, they're almost nothing compared to a place that makes clothes, for example. Because so much of that is still done by hand, right? Right. So for those industries where paying people is already a tiny part of their costs, robots just don't make as much sense, even if they could do the job. So if you're listening to this and thinking, is a robot about to take my job? First thing you got to do, look at your industry as a whole. If labor costs are already low, you're probably safe. For now, anyway. But ARK's report, they bring up a good point. All the supply chain issues, worker shortages, all that, yeah. it's actually made companies way more open to the idea of automation, even if it means spending a ton of money up front. Yeah, it's like a desperate times, desperate measures kind of thing. Exactly. Suddenly, those expensive robots are starting to look like the only way out. Right. And that's why what ARK is saying about this huge market for robots, it's not as crazy as it sounds at first. It's not just that robots are better than humans. It's all this other stuff, too. The economy, what each industry is like, even global pandemics, it's all connected. So we started with one question. Could a robot take my job? And we ended up, what, taking a deep dive into the entire economy. Pretty much. It really shows you how complex this stuff is. The future is never as simple as we think it's going to be. Well said. Well said. Mm -hmm. What surprised you the most about all this? And for everyone listening, we want to hear from you. Where do you think we'll see these robots pop up first? Let us know on social media. We'll share some of our favorites. And hey, remember, this tech, it's changing fast. What seems impossible today might be as normal as your smartphone tomorrow. So stay curious, ask questions, and most importantly, pay attention.